Good morning. It is Tuesday, February 21st, 2023, and it is time for another Taco Tuesday. Uh, welcome. My name is Jeff Bruner, and we are joined here today uh, again with another four uh, fantastic uh, vendor partners uh, for Will's Taco Tuesday. So I'd like to keep my intro short, so we're going to just get rolling right into it. We're, to start us off, I am joined by Haley Block coming to us from Canopy. Uh, Haley, um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen so that you can take the reins here. Got it. Let's see. How did I do? Well, it looks good. Oh, wonderful. I didn't need a three-year-old to help me out with that. This is great. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Thank you, Jeff. And thank you, Will's members. I am so excited to be here to join Taco Tuesday. Um, just a reminder, my name is Haley Block, and I am your Canopy account manager. I started with Canopy six months ago, and it's great that I'm able to work with all of you. And um, for most of you, or all of you, it's great to work with you again. Um, I just have a brief presentation to share with you. Um, questions will be available afterwards. Um, I'm going to share the presentation with Jeff. So if you're interested in, he could share it to you or reach out to me directly and I can share it with you as well. My contact information is noted on the screen. So feel free to jot that down. Or like I said, you'll be able to follow up afterwards. So let's begin. Um, kind of, as you know, Canopy understands the power of video, um, how important it is and necessary for films and video to support your students learning through research, presentations, and discussions. Students are engaged. Students are inspired. Canopy wants to be your partner with you to help your students succeed. We have found out that 91% of our faculty say including streaming video and other digital media and course materials improves student outcomes. 75% of students say lectures enhanced with streaming video and multimedia are more engaging. And finally, 68% of librarians believe incorporating steaming, streaming video into course assignments increases student engagement. We have learned that um, how essential video was before the pandemic, during the pandemic, when we immediately went remote, and now after the pandemic, we realize how educators and students rely on film and video. One of the many reasons that Canopy's platform is the choice of many colleges and universities is because of the partners that we have with the best suppliers and producers. Our content team works diligently to secure licenses with the best and most sought after titles that your educators are looking for. We have 40,000 titles in our library and the list keeps growing. You can see by this, is, um, by this list here, we have Kino Lorber, Criterion Pictures, The Great Courses, and so many more. With our supplier partnership, we have 55% exclusive titles on Canopy. We have quality over quantity. We just don't add titles just the sake of adding titles. We want to be sure that the titles that we are adding are relevant, interesting, compelling, and engaging. And once again, 55% of the titles are only available at the Canopy plat on the Canopy platform. Now, how can you access these films and videos? They're available from anywhere and everywhere, seven days a week, 365 days a year. So now we're at the point of the presentation of what you've been asking for, what you've been waiting for, and what you want. The long-awaited Canopy subscription model called KBase, which is Bundled Academic Subscription for Education. It is 10,000 titles for one budget. You don't have to worry about your funds. You don't have to worry about running out of money. You don't have to worry about invoicing every time you're submitting an order. It 
the list goes on and on and on. The reason why Canopy K-Base is now the perfect fit for you. We have 10,000 titles. You'll see that it's an array of multi areas, subject areas for your students, from film studies to history to journalism. And like I mentioned, it's not the bottom of the barrel, the old videos that we have available. It's been highly curated from our contact team. And I just wanna let you know the reason why this platform, this collection came to be is because of the demand of having one subscription model. Regarding some of the titles that we have available, the number one video in the K-based platform called I Am Not Your Negro is included in this collection. Once again, I just want to highlight that this is a subscription model. We base pricing upon your FTE. There is no setup fees, no additional charges, and we are offering a discount for, the, for being a Wills member. Once again, like I highlighted before, it's a complete subject coverage, multidisciplinary. We have titles in every area of your um, university. Um, as I mentioned, these are exclusive suppliers that we work with, exclusive titles, and most importantly, the best in class user experience. We have public performance rights on more than half of the titles available. Once again, very um, functionality with LibGuides. The admin portal where you're able to get detailed usage reports, export titles um, in subject areas, and once um, the newly subject guides that we now have available for your subjects. Once again, there is a reason why that Canopy is best in class user experience. We have a lot of references that it is sort of like the Netflix for students. It's very um, easy to navigate, not only for the faculty, but also for the students. As you know, Canopy is known for the PDA model, which many of you probably have, have used in the past. But we also now have the firm orders where you could purchase titles that you need. We have supplier licenses if you want to just have a subscription to Kino Lorber, the great courses. We also have, you can own the titles for perpetual access. And now we have the subscription model. So what happens now is you'll see that with all the different availability of the programs, you could custom create one that fits your needs, fits your budget. It helps with maintaining the collection available to your faculty and students. As we go back to these different areas, the subscription model is one price, one light item. You can own a title in perpetual access. And as a caveat now, we are not um, charging hosting fees. Those are now waived at Canopy. So if you're interested in that, the supplier licenses, the single title orders, and the PDA. Like I said, I just want to say thank you for taking the time to meet with me. My contact information is noted on the screen. I'm sure a lot of you have probably heard from me um, recently at Canopy, but you probably know me for the past six or seven years um, as well. So feel free to reach out to me or contact Jeff at Wills, and I'll be happy to schedule time to meet and discuss with you Canopy programs. Thank you so much, Haley. Um, I, I, I said it in the fall, but I'll say it again uh, and have said it again, uh, how excited I am for us to be able to uh, bring a Canopy to our higher ed institutions uh, via the K-based subscription model. It's really exciting. Um, uh, it's something that we've been nibbling around the edges of for years. And uh, now that uh, you're here, we've uh, been able to work together on it. So that's really cool. Um, Same here. You know, you mentioned the, all the other um, uh, models, uh, and of course, uh, I think I've I've seen where we've had a, a member who had an existing PDA model or already had credit or something like that. 
um, but you've always been, it seems to me like you've always been able to sort of work out the best way to transition them or supplement that, right? Are you, is there any, anything you can tell us a little bit about that? Absolutely. As Jeff mentioned, um, we have, I know that a lot of the schools have had a PDA program. Canopy is now understanding um, how to help maintain the mon money that you have by putting together a capped program and combining it with KBase or having a capped program and working with some of our other um, firm orders or other perpetual orders. But just know that we will make a program to fit your needs and your budget. And you could do so by scheduling time to meet. I'm very excited to have, you know, spend a few minutes sharing with you in detail, working with what programs that you are doing now and helping you make the most out of the money that you have. And as Jeff said, I am so excited to continue working with Wills. It's the best partnership I could ever ask for. Not just Canopy and Wills, but Jeff and Haley as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's very sweet of you. I've always felt I've always felt the same way. We got we work very well together. So I'm I'm Absolutely. pleased that our, our members can benefit from that too. <laughs> okay. Well, um, I I haven't seen any questions come into chat window or the Q and A, but um, I will uh, I'll echo Haley and say if you've got any questions or or anything, feel free to mention them now or if you're watching the recording and you think of something you can see Haley's contact information on the screen you almost certainly have my contact information since I email everybody who will be watching this probably gets emails from me all the time <laughs> so feel free to reach out to uh, to either of us and we'll uh, uh get you kind of set you straight get you the information that you need thank you everyone thank you Jeff and thank you Wells members look forward to hearing from you thank you Haley have a great thank day you. have a good day bye bye, -bye. Okay. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Kurt Leppert from Baker and Taylor. Uh, I want to thank you all and thank you, Jeff, and the rest of you, the Wills folks for this opportunity. This is my first Taco Tuesday, so um, hopefully I will get through it without too much trouble. Um, can you all just confirm that you can see a PDF on the screen says elevate community engagement. Yes, we do. Good. Thank you, Jeff. Um, so I know that our time is limited, but I do want to just take a minute or maybe a minute here on the front end to uh, introduce myself to you. My name is Kurt Leppert. Um, I am born and raised in Rockford, Illinois. I joined Baker and Taylor in 2000. Um, and I had call on libraries in Illinois, Iowa. And my coworker Mike Gooding, whom some of you might remember, uh, retired uh, in uh, April of 2022. So May 1st, I officially uh, assumed the Wisconsin Territory, and it's I, I kind of joke about it. I'm closer to some Wisconsin customers than I am Illinois customers, being in Rockford. So I'm really strategically located. I have started to make some. Um, visits into the state, and I plan to make more once the snow melts. Um, but of course, following this meeting, if any of you have questions about anything I uh, present here, please, please reach out to me or, you know, work through Jeff or, you know, whatever, whatever the case is. Um, I do have six things six products and services that I'm going to present today to you all. I'm going to go through them fairly quickly just for the sake of time. Um, so again, of course, uh, if you have information about pricing or would like to arrange demos, we can touch down after the uh, after this conversation. So the first thing that I'd like to speak to you or present to you is called Pop-Up Library. A uh, fairly new product for Baker and Taylor. We launched this before the pandemic, but the spirit of pop-up library is to kind of uh, expand the library beyond your four walls. And unfortunately, due to the pandemic, um, people weren't really going out into the community. Uh, having, you know, now that the pandemic hopefully largely is in our rearview mirror, we are really excited about this again. Pop-up library works two ways. You have a digital ebook or, um, you know, digital ebook collection. And what you can do is partner with 
uh, a, a, a somebody in the community. Now, this could be anybody. It could be a YMCA. It could be the Salvation Army. It could be a coffee shop. It could be a government building. But basically what happens is you have a digital collection and you would we will we will create a QR code specifically for your digital collection and you will create will help you create artwork and posters to put up in let's just say for instance a coffee shop and it will direct patrons to scan the QR code from their own device and it will take them directly to uh, your digital collection and it'll be messaged that these are provided by the local library. Um, the library, the patron does not have to have a library card, so they don't need to be a user. They are prompted, though, after a screen or two, if they're wanting more information about the library and the library programs to enter uh, contact information, and then you can do outreach to them. So this is a really great way to um, reach patrons, kind of what I say, where they're at. Uh, they may not know where the library is. They maybe haven't been to the library in a long time. Um, but this is just a nice service to kind of meet patrons where they're at. And it works either by scanning a QR code or we do have a device, very, very similar to a hotspot device um, that we could also provide to you. And it creates a, a closed Wi-Fi network in whatever um, location you you position these devices. So that is called pop-up library and very, very excited about that. The next item is a kind of a third party partnership that we have with Press Reader. Um, if you are familiar with Press Reader, Press Reader is a collection of over 7,000 digital uh, newspapers and magazines, international and international um, and just as a matter of fact, last week, I just learned that the um, Economist magazine is now exclusive to Press Reader. And The Economist is certainly um, an authority on world events, finance, analysis. Uh, Press Reader is now the exclusive provider of The Economist magazine. Uh, and the Press Reader collection is all digital ebooks or uh, newspapers and magazines. This is, uh, they, they render as the image edition. So these are not, um, this is not an archive of, it's not a database or an archival database of articles that you search. They actually render as the uh, image edition. And the appeal, uh, one of the appeals of this is that there, it offers a lot of international content. So if you've got uh, a particular community that would like to read their local paper or a newspaper in their um, in their native language, this is a very nice service to offer and it is available um, uh, on the, uh, the web or as there's an app too. So that's Press Reader. The next product that we have here, or this is also a third party partnership, it's with Bendable. Uh, this is actually a product that was incubated at the Drucker Institute. Um, and the pilot, the first pilot library was St. Joe Public Library in South Bend, Indiana. It has since become such a uh, it's become, it's take, it's it's beyond the point of being incubated to now where it is no longer associated with the Drucker Institute and it is called Bendable Labs. The product is the same, however, basically what Bendable is, is a discovery layer or a federated search that combines all of your learning platforms into one kind of um, portal. So there's three different levels of Bendable. There's basic, full, and plus. And just as an example with the basic level of Bendable is we would work with you or Bendable would work with you and the learning platform providers that you already subscribe to, such as LinkedIn Learning or Learning Express or Creative Bug, 
we will take those that you already subscribe to and then add free content from GFC Global, LRNG, Khan Academy, SCORE, and edX. And we'll combine those with what you already subscribe to into a portal with a federated search. So when the patron can just go to one place and search, you know, they want to learn how to create an Excel spreadsheet. They can just search Excel and Bendable will pull up all of the potential uh, learning opportunities. And the graphic there in the bottom left corner is the 5X. Databases, no surprise, are very, very expensive and libraries wrestle with how to drive traffic to those and increase return on investment. Bendable is a great way to do that by driving traffic to your learning platforms by having it in one place. So that is Bendable. Uh, the next product is called BT Cat. BT Cat is a uh, Baker and Taylor. We created this uh, cataloging utility and database. Uh, Baker and Taylor is probably has one of the largest probably tech services department um, in the country. I can probably safely say that. Um, and we were using a third party product to do our cataloging uh, for customers and with some savvy programmers and some coders, code, folks that did coding, we created our own database um, using Microsoft software and uh, we've been using it daily in our service centers for two years now. And we are scaling it and making it available to libraries to use as a very viable alternative to OCLC, Connection, Sky River, It's Mark. Um, there is a community of records uh, that you can search. You can also put in up to 10 open URLs to search. So if you had a statewide catalog or um, an academic library that had a large academic collection that you also wanted to search, you could put those URLs into um, the BTCAT search. And then there's a number of ways to use macros to compare and contrast records and edit. And uh, we have APIs with the ILS vendors to actually um, them in, import those records into your catalog after you've edited them. Um, so that is called BT Cat. The next product um, is called Collection HQ. What Collection HQ does, or Collection HQ is analytics software that looks at your collection and gives you back actionable information. It's kind of one of the ways I describe Collection HQ is um, it gives you information that you can act on as opposed to data that you are like kind of left to, to interpret. Um, all the different ILSs have some version of this, but it gives you a lot of, like I said, data and it you doesn't really don't know how useful that information is to glean what it's telling you. Collection HQ uses reports like collection check, grubby, dead on arrival, and actually tells you, hey, you need more, you need to move money from this collection to this collection because these are the books that are checking out. Or if you've got multiple branches, it's very useful to help you decide or determine if you want to move a title from one branch to another instead of just buying a new copy for that branch. So at the end of the day, it helps you make uh, informed buying decisions so that you're purchasing materials that your patrons are actually checking out. So that is Collection HQ and it's, an, so it's, a, it's analysis. Uh, the last uh, part here, and I'm up against the clock, I apologize, this is diversity analysis. Um, all, subscribe, all users that have Collection HQ, this includes diversity analysis. However, diversity analysis is also a standalone subscription if you are interested. It, this also looks at your collection um, and puts it into, puts each item into one of 12 different diversity categories. I will tell you that the bright line here is that diversity analysis reviews the content, not the creator. And if any of you have done this at some level, you realize what a heavy lift it is to identify diversity in your collection. 
Um, so that is my last um, diversity analysis. That's everything that I wanted to show you all. Um, I'll stop sharing. And if there's any questions, I know I'm at 12 o'clock. If anybody has a quick question they want me to address, otherwise we can certainly touch down after the meeting. I'm all ears. Thanks so much, Kurt. Um, I It doesn't look to me like we've had any questions come into our chat or the, the Q&A um, module here, but uh, please, anyone watching this live or, or recording, if you have uh, any questions, uh, uh, for Kurt, please either let me know or, or reach out directly to Kurt and we'll be happy to get you the answers. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jeff. And thank you, everybody. Thanks. Thanks again for joining us, Kurt. Have a good day. You too. Thank you. All right. I am just going to share my screen again just to uh, get us set up for our next presenter. Uh, who uh, is here, ready to go, I think. Um, coming up next is uh, uh, Alexander joining us from Classhook. Um, Alexander, are you on the line? Yes, I am. Great. All right. I'm going to stop sharing my screen um, so that you can uh, take us into our next session. Sounds wonderful. Thanks, Jeff, for the opportunity. This is uh, my second or third Taco Tuesday. I can't, can't quite recall. <laughs> but, yes, um, I, it's definitely the second, but you're right. It might also be the third. Anyway, we're we're pleased to have you back. Yes. So thanks everyone for the opportunity to share. I am Alex, co-founder and CEO of Classhook. This is a product mostly for school librarians, but there are is definitely applicability for other libraries as well. And what we focus on is engaging every student using TV shows and movies. So what I'm going to do is a quick overview of what we do and show you a few examples. Then actually I'll dive in for a really quick demo so you can see what it looks like and how it might fit into your workflow. So uh, me and my co-founder Joyce, we were good friends. We started Classhook uh, about six to eight, eight years ago, I believe. Wow, it, the time is flying by, flown by. So uh, we started Classhook really to make impact on education. We noticed there's a big problem in real world learning where a lot of schools in the U.S. are not bringing in more tangible learning for students and creating connection points so that students can understand what's the value of my learning? Like, why does this matter? Why is this important? Right. And so we found uh, some stats that 89% of educators say real world learning is an urgent need, but just 22% of schools are actually progressing on it. And a couple of the reasons for that is it's really time and cost prohibitive to bring uh, real world learning into the classroom. And what that usually looks like is going to a field trip, right? Or uh, bringing in a guest speaker and teachers have to coordinate all of this and then there has to be budget for the school to go out and bring uh, students into the real world um, and it's just not it's just not feasible so one of the things that we found is that content could play a big role in this in making learning more tangible and relevant but one of the issues is that teachers spend up to 10 hours a week looking for videos for their lessons because there's so much specific criteria and they'll go on and search on many databases, they'll go search on YouTube, they'll go search on Google for video content, and they're just coming up short a lot of the time. So essentially what we do is we have a platform that brings popular media into the classroom and allows educators to use it to create discourse and discussion. So we've compiled a list of over 7,100 educational scenes from your favorite TV shows and movies, think like The Simpsons, Aladdin, Frozen, many of the shows that you're in movies that your students are watching, and then we provide them with engagement tools so your educators can use those videos in a classroom and start a discussion. Just to show you what some of our clips look like, I have a little showcase here. This is a couple of minutes. I'm going to share my sound. Um, if there are issues hearing it, just put it in the chat and I'll see what to do, but um, just sit back, relax, and enjoy. Okay, who's ready for some science? <laughs> Ready for this? Wow. This country was a part of England. We wasn't getting along with them, too. That could be 40. 
40. No, 10. Oh dear, that's no good. Dear, this is from our wisdom stuff. The supply and demand has a big problem. You want to talk about a supply and demand problem? I sell ice for a living. That's rough business to be in right now. <laughs> you were going to ditch me? Oh, no. Liar. I never lie. Yes, you do. And you know what you know? Well, actually, I... The time you lie, you turn green. I do not lie. <laughs> If I do not use my heater, I will be <laughs> slowly killed by the laws of thermodynamics. Pinch must have knocked out the power lines. Fine, I'll see what's on TV. Y'all ready for this? That runs on electricity on the scope. All right, I'll watch a DVD. There's no way that runs on electricity. <laughs> The yeah. atom is the smallest unit in a chemical element. Atoms are made of three parts. What was this sentence originally? Oh, they are warm, nice people with big hearts. And that became their human prepossessing homo sapiens <laughs> with full-sized aortic pumps. <laughs> Okay. Great. Well, thanks, everyone. Hopefully you got a sense of what kinds of educational content there is out there in the shows and movies that we watch every day. Um, it's pretty surprising what we found. And so right now I'm going to hop into a demo and just show you the platform and see how you might be able to use it. Uh, if you have questions, of course, put them in the chat and I'm happy to answer any, any questions you have, of course. Um, so just give me a second here to just switch my screen over to Classhook. Um, so Essentially, what you'll do is you'll come in, you'll sign up. It takes less than a minute to sign up, um, and you can sign up whether you're a librarian, whether you're an instructional coach, whether you're a teacher right, or a school principal. Um, and what you're going to do is you're going to just look for content that matches your lesson. As a teacher, I'm trying to teach something like physics or um, language arts, and I need content. So uh, how can I find a relevant example from a TV show or movie? and bring that into my classroom. And that's what Classwork helps you with. So let's say I'm teaching simile in my next lesson. <clears throat> All you're going to do is type what you're searching for, and then it's going to show you results from shows like or movies like Pocahontas, Aladdin, Trek. There's a whole lot of clips here. And it shows you a lot of information about each video, like what subjects it teaches, what specific concepts it teaches, what grades it's appropriate for, and a description of what happens in the video. So you're not doing all that filtering on your own. This is what teachers are doing on their own when they're spending 10 hours a week looking for content, right? We already take care of all that for you. And then you can come here and watch the video clip right away um, with uh, no ads. So we do have a partnership with YouTube for Education. This is pretty new where you can watch video clips from YouTube, whether they're on Classhook or your own videos without ads, without tracking, without any, any of that stuff. Um, that's not desirable in education. And this is a new player that YouTube's developed, and there are only a very few partners who they're working with, and Classhook is one of them. So we're really excited to offer this to educators. Um, when you come here, you can organize yourself in many ways by creating playlists of videos. You can share this out to uh, a PowerPoint or Google Slides or some other um, some other medium, if you'd like. And then one of the things I want to show you is how you can use this video clip in a discussion. So what I'm going to do is go to discuss. I'm going to click create. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to embed a question in the video at a certain time so that when I'm talking to my, showing the video clip to my students, I can get them to think about a certain concept or a certain idea that they want to use or they don't want to convey. So let's say, let's go do, you know, 20, Hello. 23 seconds and then ask, why is Forrest asking about chocolate? You can set a timer or not. So we'll set three minutes as a demo account. So I have tons of prompts here. You don't want this many. Your students are going to go crazy <laughs> if you're showing the clip. And what we're going to do is we're going to play the video clip. I'm going to skip a little ahead. And then this is how the flow would work in a classroom. Hello. You'll play the video clip. It'll show the question. And then you could have a number of activities with your students about this question. Now, this is great for in-person synchronous, right? Um, verbal discussion. 
if you want to assign it out to students, you can do that. If you want to have a live discussion with all the kids participating on their phone or their tablet or their computer and answering those questions in real time, you can do that too. Now, something that's particularly relevant, especially that we see a lot of uh, librarians using, is the playlist feature. So this is where you can organize resources for your teachers and just give them a nice list. Hey, here's a, a bit of video clips you can use about this topic. So I have one here for STEM, which of course is a pretty big topic now, right, in, in, in many school environments. And there's a lot of federal and fu state funding for STEM. Um, and what I've done is I created, added four video clips here under STEM that can be used to teach different concepts. <clears throat> what you can do is you can collaborate with your teachers. So you can invite them over and create a link um, and send them this link. And then they could, once they have their classic account set up, they can actually come in and see the resources that you've shared with them and add or remove and anything. So what you can imagine doing is creating a list of different playlists for different teachers, um, if that is your role as a, as a librarian, and um, sourcing these video clips for them and making sure they have access to them. So just to make their jobs even easier. Now, if you want, we also provide our list of pre-made playlists. Um, if you're going under the browse here, So we have some recommended playlists for you um, that we have, our team has created or that other educators have created as well. So tons of video clips here, um, you know, on anything from figurative language to, um, to, to science and poetry, you know, and so. So that's Classhook. Uh, here, I'll just show you the pricing. We're a free resource, a freemium resource rather. You can get started for free, watch up to 20 videos a month create as many playlists as you'd like. And then if you want to use some more of the discussion activities, which I showed a little bit about, um, you could, you'll get some limits on those. The premium has everything and it get, includes the ad, ad free player. There is a cost to us for partnering with YouTube. So that's why we have to charge for that. Um, and if you're working with a school, we do have organization licenses as well. Flat license, all teachers, unlimited trainings, all of that's encompassed in that. So you don't have to worry about what do I have left and what don't I get and, and this and that. It's just very straightforward. You get either something or you get everything, <laughs> regardless of which plan you're choosing. Uh, with the basics, it means you know, you're getting some things and then the, of course, premium and organization plan, you're getting everything. Um, we have a lot of help resources here too. If you wanna understand how can I help my teachers use this in the classroom, there are nine concrete use cases we have here that you can share with them or that you can explore on your own uh, to understand where this might fit in with instruction in, in the classroom. Um, and then we do have guides on everything and training videos. So everything I just showed you, how do I add a prompt to a clip? Well, here's a video that shows you exactly how to do that. So we're trying to be as helpful to educators as we can to make their jobs easier and to give them the resources they need to be successful using Classhook. One last thing with a, another minute left, I want to show you the personal clips. So this is where you can bring your own content onto Classhook. So you can import a YouTube playlist. Let's say you're, you might be creating playlists for your teachers, or you want to add a clip. Let's say I want to find a clip from YouTube, and I'm, I'm going to search directly on YouTube about, um, say, simile, just like we said before. Here's a great simile clip. I'm going to click Add. And what I can even do is I could trim that video to a certain time. So I want to start it at one minute and it ended at two minutes and 30 seconds. And here's my video. And then I could change any details about it and then add it. Once it's added, I can come here. I can access it. I can share it out, right? I could use the discussion features like embed questions in it if I want. So there's a whole host of extra benefits you get by bringing the content onto Classwork. And so you're not stuck with the library of content we provide you with. We have a lot, right? It's all from popular media. And there are 20 plus subjects we have represented here. So your English, your math, your science, your business, health, social, emotional learning, and many others. But you almost certainly have your own videos that you like to bring onto Classic and use with your students. So that's a little quick overview of Classhook. Um, would love to connect, you know, if you have any questions. Um, and I'll pass that off to uh, to Jeff if there are no other questions.
Thank you so much, Alexander. Uh, as always, a uh, great demo, really cool product. Um, I'm very excited to have you back today. Um, I haven't seen any questions come in, so um, I will, uh, I'll encourage uh, folks to reach out to us here at Wills or reach out to Alexander if you've got questions, we can uh, help get you uh, the information you need. Thanks again, Alexander. Thanks everyone. Okay, I'm going to share my screen one more time just to uh, set us up for uh, our uh, last uh, presenter. I can see she's already uh, ready and raring to go here. Um, ready to go. Okay. Can you Julie, hear me okay? Yep, we can hear you. Uh, awesome. I'm happy to introduce uh, Lynn from uh, Demco. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I'm super excited to um, show you guys. My name is Lynn uh, from Demco. I am the local Wisconsin rep. Um, and I'll be showing you a little kind of snippet of our showroom today. So in our Madison office, um, during COVID, we were able to clear out a lot of cubicles where a lot of our coworkers were working that now work from home and create a really great showroom space. So um, I'll be walking you through kind of three of our furniture collections, but um, if you're interested in more or if you want to take a tour of the full showroom, because this is really just kind of a corner of the showroom here, let me know and I'm more than happy to um, set that up with you. So. I'll start with our Colorscape collection and hopefully the video is following me over here. Um, so we have our Colorscape collection, which consists of different shelving options, different um, soft seating options, different play pods to make things really colorful and inviting and playful. And all of these pieces work together to create a really engaging and exciting environment for students where they want to learn. Um, we also have incorporated some of our brand new shelf spark um, collections on the shelves as well, which includes some bookshelf dividers, some acrylic displays, um, some face out displays, um, you, which you can see here. And these we know are proven to increase circulation of all the collections that use those kind of elements. Um, so it's really great to be able to help students find, you know, their nonfiction collections, whether it's sports, um, or dinosaurs, um, or even your um, fiction collections as well, whether that's face out browsing or dividing them so that it's easy for people to find um, those collections. Can you guys see me okay? In the video? Yes, yep, we can see you. Okay, awesome. I can't see myself now on the screen, so I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> yep. Um, so that's kind of a big chunk of our Colorscape collection. We also have the soft seating pieces here. Um, we can do these in a variety of different colors and um, kind of different patterns as well. Um, so as you can see, we have it very much set up for kind of a elementary um, age level or littles age level, uh, but these can easily be um, changed in different colors and configurations to make it work well for a more um, older age group or sophisticated age group. So that is our Colorscape collection. And then moving over into our Gear Guard collection, which is the second collection I'm gonna to highlight today. Um, and this collection is a really cool uh, collection that we actually developed when we were bringing some of our STEM and robotics kits to ALA and built a table with an edge. And a lot of people came by asking, where can we get that? So we were able to develop this collection based on that feedback. And I'll show you, we have our kind of OG gear guard table here, um, which has a much larger work surface. It has adjustable height legs, so that'll go all the way from 26 to 38. Um, so you have a wide height range for different age groups. Um, so the gear guard table, um, as I mentioned, there's storage that you can add underneath the surface as well. Um, and it does have a two inch lip all the way around. So it's great for Legos, robotics, all those kinds of um, type activities that have little parts that you want to kind of keep contained and don't want kind of spilling off on the floor. So that's the regular um, gear guard table. Then we have the gear guard stem station, um, which is a little bit smaller work surface, but it has a lot of storage underneath. So two large shelves that you can have with or without bins, different um, types of uh, stores that you can have here, or you can just have if you have um, your materials kind of in boxes, you can have those on there as well. So this is our gear guard collection. And then I'm sure you're thinking, where do I keep all my fun STEM stuff organized? And the show and stow is absolutely perfect for that. So the show and stow is something that we developed 
based on feedback that you need storage, but we need something that doesn't add to the visual clutter of the space. So the show and stow is perfect for that. It has porcelain uh, magnetic whiteboards on the front, so you can use it as a uh, visual communication tool. You can use it to um, display its magnet, so you can have all different kinds of uh, materials on here for signage or just um, using it as a whiteboard. And then at the inside, there are 11 different configurations of shelves, totes, carts, all different kinds of storage options. So you can really customize this to fit your needs in your space. Um, and in the cart right here, we do have our um, Demco Maker cart. If I can pull that out. And this cart is separate from this show and stove, but it is a all-in-one kind of cart maker collection where it has all the consumables. Oh, can you guys see me okay? I might have the gone camera, off screen. Let me. Yeah, the camera rolled off just a little there bit. There we oh, go. No, <laughs> so the maker collection, um, this has all the different kinds of consum consumables. It's great for kids kind of K through six. Um, and it also comes with all different kinds of maker challenges. So it's not something that you have to kind of get the kit and you're like, okay, what do I do from here? There are activity challenges that help you kind of get started and get students kind of working on these. And it comes fully loaded with all the consumables. So a really great collection. Um, and yeah, this fits right into the show and stow. And the show and stow, like I said, has 11 different configurations. So you can easily have different shelves, carts, totes, whatever you may need. And it also has a lock on the bottom of the unit. So you can kind of keep things tucked away and not accessible for when everybody is um, in the space. So that's kind of it. Again, more than happy to help with any questions or um, if you'd like to have a tour or you want us to check out any spaces that you're working on, let us know and I'm more than happy to come out and visit or chat with you about those spaces. Great. I think Thank that's so about much. my time. Lynn, you did a great job. Thank you so much. I'm Absolutely. sorry for the technical problems on uh, on our end, but I think no everyone worries. was seeing you the whole time. And uh, if not, maybe we can uh, maybe we can cut something in to make sure that you're getting your full time on the record. Oh, good. No <laughs> worries. I can absolutely record it again too if it if I need to. So okay. happy to well, do that. Thank you again, Lynn, for joining us yeah. uh, today. And if anyone has any questions for Lynn uh, or really for any of the presenters from today's Taco Tuesday, I hope uh, you'll reach out to them or to us here at Wills and we can get you uh, the information you need. All right. That's no, great. Thank I'm you gonna, so much. Thank you, Lynn. Okay, I think we'll go back to, uh, to my wrap up screen here. Uh, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully that wasn't too jarring uh, when uh, we had a little bit of a screen share mishap. So we had a couple of technical hiccups today, but all in all, I'd still say a really great Taco Tuesday. Um, thank you to everyone who presented today uh, from Canopy, Baker & Taylor, Classic, and Demco. And thank you to, uh, to you, our audience, uh, Will's members who uh, are here live or who are watching the uh, recording in the future. Uh, as always, we will be uh, running another Taco Tuesday two weeks uh, hence, uh, hence is a weird word, two weeks from now uh, on March 7th uh, at this same time, 11.30 a.m. Central. So I hope you'll join us again. Uh, thanks again to everyone and um, have a great afternoon. <laughs>